So now that we have our particle system set up, we can start fleshing it out a little bit. Um, the first things, the first thing we need to do is have a closer look at the um, particle container class. So it has an update and a render and a maximum number of particles and this array. So that's all good. And if you recall correctly from our previous um, tutorial, we have the particle class. So what I want to do, uh, first of all, in the particle container and particle class is to allow this particle class to only be constructed by particle container. And I'll show you how I do that. The first thing I do is I make the constructor private. And this is only called by particle container. And now what I do is I create a friend class and I'll explain what this does in a minute. So by doing this friend class inside by particle class, I say that only this class particle container is allowed to access private methods and uh, variables inside the particle class. The benefit of this is that nobody can construct a particle from outside this piece of code without going through the particle container, which is what I want to happen. And then in particle container, we can have some various methods to construct things in here. So that makes things very easy. Okay, so the first thing we need to do now is actually just go into the CPP for each of these files, which are empty at the moment, and just include the relevant header file, depending on the name of the file. And then we're just going to test that that compiles. So I, I compile very often when I'm busy coding, just to check this is better to catch problems and sort of nip them in the bud. And that looks correct. Okay, let's see if that works. And that worked fine, so that's good. That means that we've got most of our things right. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to start fleshing out the particle manager's uh, various functions. So we're just going to copy them. And just before I do that, I just want to make a type diff. This type is becoming a bit unwieldy. So I'm going to name a new type called particle list. Did I get that right? I can never remember whether the type or the alias comes first. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Okay, so that's a little bit easier to read. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compile again just to make sure that I got that right because the entire sense is not like, yeah, okay, no, I got that wrong. So it is alias and then type, okay, type and then alias, that's better. Okay, yep, it's happy with that. All right, so let us pop these in here. Okay, so these are functions we have to flesh out because they're only declarations at the moment, which is pretty useless. And we'll just give them some bodies. Okay, so the manager and everything doesn't do much at the moment. We'll get back there. And the names right now are pretty self-explanatory. We don't really have to do too much. And one other thing I've forgotten to do is to stick all of this in the right namespace. So that will immediately give us a compiler error if we try to compile it now. So we'll just pop things into the RCJ namespace. And there we go. Okay, so they're all in RCJ namespace now. Okay, so we're going to do the same very quickly for all of these other classes. So Particle has a whole bunch of things. And once again, we start off with a namespace. We should actually start with that. Pop things in here. And because of the ordering in the uh, constructor, things look a bit wonky here. But we'll just, I'd like to have the constructors at the top of the file. So it's sort of the first thing you see and uh, when you open the file, and it's also the first thing that the object is involved in is construction, obviously. Right, so that's looking good. And last but not least, the containers. We'll just do the same for them. And we've left out a very important thing, which is to actually um, initialize some of these member variables. So we'll do that in the next step. So we don't exactly know what they do yet, but we'll get there. Okay, give each of these a body. And once we have a body, we can do a quick test and just make sure everything compiles, but it won't because I've got constant member variables in my class, particularly in this class. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to initialize these in my constructor. And there is only the one constructor that's available because we've put all these in the private block. And in fact, anybody who tries to use them inside of this class won't be able to because they won't have declaration. So they'll get a linker error which is what we want. We don't want people calling those functions. Okay, so let's have a little bit more of a look. I'm going to initialize these member variables in the constructor initializer block. 
um, which happens before the actual function body of the constructor. It's a good place to construct variables because uh, for two reasons. First of all, it provides a single place where they can be constructed and um, sort of a, a defined place where they can be constructed and we, people, people know where to look. And the second thing, the second reason I like having it here is um, because, well, it's not because I like, it's you have to have it here. If you want to have any constant variables in a class that don't change over the lifetime of that class, you have to initialize them in this. Um, so it enforces a number of strict standards on us, uh, which is a good thing because it reduces the complexity of our program. The more constant data we have, the better, because um, that data is assumed to not change. Uh, it makes our decisions later on much easier. So let's begin by turning m particles into an array. Okay, now immediately when I look at this, I think there is a small improvement we can make. When this class is constructed, particle container, we know the maximum number of particles. It will never change. It's not a class that's going to dynamically grow its array at all for performance reasons. It could, but we don't want it to. For performance, we want to have a fixed size class. It's allocated at runtime. The user sets it once. So that means that the maximum number of particles is constant, but that also means that potentially this array could be constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the pointer constant. I'm going to move it down here. These are variables that don't change over this class's lifetime. And these are the sort of dynamic variables will go into this section, which do change while the class is active. And I'm just going to check the order, particles and then maximum. That's right. Order is very important in these initializer lists because sometimes one variable depends on the contents of another. So you have to keep very good track of your order. Okay. So the number of particles, the dynamic version, starts out at zero, obviously, because we always start with zero particles. And I'm going to use what might be a little bit of a strange syntax to you with this comma. But what happens is, um, because I have the uh, colon here to start the initializer list, um, by putting the, co the little comma here, it means that my commas don't get lost, uh, you know, against this C of whatever is happening on the right side here. And it, I personally just feel that it looks a little bit neater, so that's why I do it that way. Okay, so the type of this pointer is actually now a constant pointer. So what we can do now is, and immediately when I start doing this, I say, okay, I want to make an array of particles using malloc or whatever, or new, which is what I'm going to use. But I haven't actually initialized this variable yet, so it would be better... Oh, I just accidentally started up there. It would be better if this was actually here first because we want to initialize them in the order that we use them. And this is what I mean, exactly what I mean about one variable using the value of another. So I initialize the maximum number of particles in memory variable with the argument. And now I'm going to use this to construct my particles using the brackets, bracket new operator. So new particle and I tell it how many. And I've just realized that that should be okay because uh, the bracket operator new, the array operator new, should take a constant. So let's just see if that compiles very quickly because I'm not 100% sure if that will compile, but it should. I want that to be as constant as possible. Okay, we've got some errors. It might not be... So, can I convert? Okay, that's fine. Member could not be initialized. That looks okay, actually. Um, so, the problem we have here is we're trying to actually uh, create a pointer-to-pointer, -pointer, which is wrong. We shouldn't be doing that. So, that was my mistake. Let's see if that works a bit better. But the compile error I feared we would see is not there, which is good. Okay, so that's totally unrelated. That's fine. So, we're just going to make this one return null for the moment. And that means everything should compile correctly. Okay, so to recap, um, when you create a container, you have a number of particles that starts out as zero. You have the maximum particle count ever for this container, which starts out as a defined value. And then you have this. So that's all good. Uh, one slight problem is if the user specifies a max number of particles of zero, um, this operator new will most probably assert. But I think that's a pretty unlikely scenario. And we can probably do a check for it in the particle manager in the add particle container high level function, we can just do an assert. Um, in here, theoretically, a max number of particles will be defined somewhere. So we'll just later on, we'll just put a note here to remind ourselves that the max number of particles must be greater than zero. It's kind of pointless having it in this function because 
by the time you get to this piece of code that has already executed so you can't really do an assert based on that there's no way to do asserts in the initializer block okay so our particle container can now be constructed and the other the complementary op operation obviously is to delete uh, this particle list so we just call delete the bracket the array delete on m particles and that should correctly allocate and deallocate it for us okay so let's go back to particle manager all right so now that we can create uh, particle containers using this constructor we need to think a little bit about how particle containers are going to be created and where the more importantly where the data for them comes from so to begin with um, i'm just going to use a very very simple uh, method and we can just randomly arbitrarily create particle containers by specifying how big they are how many particles they can have so we'll just do that this is a very first version and we'll once again as before we assert as we discussed and then we're just going to return a new particle container and the constructor that we'll use is this one which is given for us no, visual assist and the entirely sense of fighting there so we want that this one excellent particles and that's it okay so that should be fine now in here we might want to check um you know do we have too many particle containers or is there not enough room or whatever but for now i think this will suffice and if you look closely here in the particle manager we have a list of particles so we also want to add it which means that we're actually going to have to cache off this so we're going to create a pointer called new container we're going to return new container as before that's the contract of the function that's what the function does it returns a new container but just before we return it we're going to add it to our list particle list which is uh, m particles so we're going to push that onto the back and we just check that the types are right yeah it's a list of pointers so we already have the pointer here we can just add that using the pushback goes to the back of that list and bang we've got our list of particles now immediately we've got a problem let's have a look and see what it is okay the declaration is not compatible that's because we forgot to put this argument into the declaration it's just one of the little vagaries of c++ you have to do it sort of pairs pairs of declarations like that um, we've also got a problem here and that is that we need a channel so we're just going to use the default channel if you want to know more about what that means just go and investigate, examine the um, the uh, Marmalade documentation. But it, effectively, the default just means throw this into the default channel. So that's very simple. And we, let's do a bit more skeleton stuff here. Not, nothing working yet, but eventually we'll start testing it within a few minutes. So our update and render methods um, are very simple. Update just goes through each particle, um, each particle container. And for each particle, it updates the various bits and pieces in that particle. You know, it steps it, it checks the lifetime, things like that. Um, the render method is similar, but it's very different. For every particle container, it submits the list of vertices and various other streams to the GPU. So they're sort of a pair of functions that are called in slightly different contexts, but they're very similar things. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to take this list and iterate through it. So we, as be remember before, we type def this type, and this is where this type def is going to come in useful because typing in std list particle container pointer, uh, you know, template. It, Bit of a bit of a pain but it's much easier just to type in particle list we can use that because it's stl it's very simple and the particle list always an, has an iterator and it's equal to the begin so we initialize this iterator with the begin function which returns a first in that in that list and then we check that the iterator is not equal to the end which is a special token you can call end function to access that and lastly we in increment it so that'll go through each of the particles in our list if there are any and we'll copy that into the render because it does exactly the same thing okay and then what we do is um, now that I wrote this I actually realized that I've done wrong this particle list should be particle container list or we'll just call it particle CTR list for short and we'll rename that here and we'll just check and it's m particle what did I call it? M particle containers, because that's actually a wrong name. It's not particles, it's particle containers. Okay, that's done. That should allow us to iterate. Okay, so I'm going to end the video here. Thank you for watching. Um, this is the Bayside Games Dev Block Tutorial. We'll carry on with finishing up this class in the next tutorial. Thank you.